One of the options you have when creating a component is always face camera. If that's checked, we refer to the component as a face me component because it always faces the camera no matter what point of view you have. This has an implication on shadows, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Face me components are best made in a side view, in elevation. So here I'm going to delete this object and press Command 3 to go in the front view. I'll also press J to go into parallel projection mode. So I'm looking at an elevation. I'm going to create a piece of entourage, that is, a person that we can put into our scene that will always face the camera so that we don't blow the illusion and see the person edge on, revealing that they're actually mapped to a plane. Use the rectangle tool and create a rectangle in the general shape of a person. I'll make it three feet wide and six feet high, and then zoom in. Double click to select the face and its edges. Press G to define it as a component. I'll call this person and check always face camera. I'll click create and let's see what we have. Press J to go into perspective and then orbit around and you'll see that as you rotate the plane always faces the camera no matter what. It does this by rotating around the blue axis and it does that at its insertion point which is down here in this corner by default. Typically with entourage you want to have them rotate about their center point. So we're going to have to move that over in the component definition. You can move the axes over in an existing component by right-clicking and saying Change Axes. This doesn't refer to the axes of space. Rather, it's the local coordinate system of the component. I'll click the midpoint along the lower edge to define this insertion point. And then the red axis should be along the edge. And strangely enough, the green axis should stay on the ground. So I'm going to click again on the red axis to locate that just as it was before. Now I need to go ahead and insert an instance of this component. So I'll open the components window and there's our person component. Notice that it's attached to the cursor at this new insertion point. I'll click it at the origin point here and you can see what's happening. Now that you understand the mechanics of a face me component, let's actually build a real one and we'll just start from scratch. It's necessary to leave SketchUp temporarily and go over to Photoshop where we have a texture. This image comes to us courtesy of iStock Photo and it's part of my Photoshop for Architects CS3 Extended Edition DVD. In that DVD I show how to extract the figure from the ground and I end up making this layer mask right here. Basically we want to have the pixels representing the person as the only thing in this file. Everything else is transparent. That way, when we composite it into the FaceMe component in SketchUp, we'll just be looking at the person, and we can put them in front of a building, and it will look like they're standing there. So I save this on my hard drive just as a native Photoshop document, a PSD file. I'll switch back to SketchUp, and let's build the component. Switch to the front view by pressing Command 3, and press J to go into parallel projection mode. Recreate the rectangle, and make it 3 feet by 6 feet and then zoom in. Press B to activate the Paint Bucket tool. If you're on the Mac, you have to click the brick symbol to access your library. Right-click in this area and say New Texture. You're prompted to select a file. Here we have the businesswoman.psd file. I'll open that. And then I'm prompted to set a width and a height. Let's say she's about 5 foot 5. That sounds about right. I'll click OK and the texture has been created, but it's at the bottom of this list. I need to scroll down. Click the texture, and then click on the screen. Notice that we can see the sky through here, because we're looking at transparent pixels on this image. Textures tile or repeat by default in two directions, so we need to do something about that. I'll select this edge and use the Move tool to move it in, thereby cropping out the copy of the person. Press the spacebar and pre-select the top edge. Move it down in the same way. Now, I don't want to see these solid lines every time I have this piece of entourage, so I'm going to double click and then hold down shift and deselect the face. Press H to hide the edges. And now to define the component, double click to select the face and its hidden edges. 
Press G to define the component. I'll call it Woman, Always Face Camera, and set component axes. Just click this button to do that directly while you're defining the component. I'll set the insertion point right here at the midpoint of the lower edge. And then I need to pick a point for the red axis and a point for the green axis. Now the green axis should actually be on the ground, just as it was previously. So I'll click over here. Create. And there we have it. Now that we've successfully created the FaceMe component, let's place it in the context of a project. To do this, I'll actually delete this instance. I don't have to worry about losing it because it's stored within SketchUp's database within this file. I can call for that component whenever I need it in the Components window. I'll unhide the building, which is in this file, and zoom out to look at it. I'll go into Perspective Mode and zoom in on this outdoor courtyard area. Then I'll open the Components window, click on the entourage that we just created, and place her in this space. So now she'll look good no matter what orientation we're looking at because this plane always faces the camera and so we never blow this illusion of having a photographic texture mapped onto a plane. Before we conclude, there's one other thing I'd like to mention about shadows. I'm going to select this component and just open up the component dialog. If you're creating a face me component, the default option is to have the shadows face the sun, and this is generally a good idea. Let me just show you what that looks like. I'll open up the shadows dialog here and display shadows. So right now you see that the shadow is going this way, the same direction as all the other shadows. And as I orbit around, that relationship does not change. This is a good thing, because if the shadows didn't face the sun, they'd be facing this thin plane and we'd be getting sort of weird shadows. Unfortunately, the shadow that is cast is rectangular. SketchUp isn't smart enough to create the shadow based on the transparency here. So the workaround for that is to use components that are cut out around the edges. And we can see those examples in the component window. Here's an example right here. This is actually a cutout. We can place it here. And you see that when I turn on the shadows, this will cast an accurate shadow because the object is actually cut out here. These are edges all the way around. So you do have the option of going around this figure with the freehand tool and creating myriad edges that trace around her. And only then would you get an accurate shadow on the ground. There is a way to do this using Photoshop, Illustrator, and SketchUp Pro, but it's probably overkill in most situations. The Components window allows you to access everything having to do with components. You can expand it to see more of them. You can access the components that you make or components that are already in your SketchUp file. You can also access components that are on your hard drive, or on your file server, or even in the 3D warehouse. Right here, you can look at this information in different ways. Small thumbnails, large thumbnails, list view, and my favorite, details. This icon represents the components that are in the model. This arrow gives you a whole list of different places. The second item here are components which are in a specific folder on your hard drive. And it used to be in previous versions of SketchUp that there were bonus packs of components you could download from Google. And what I've done is I've transferred these components from the old version to the new one. Let me just show you how I did that. I placed these folders that are themselves filled with other folders and eventually with SketchUp files into this particular folder called Components, and its path is listed right here on the Mac. On the PC, it would be under C Program Files, Google, SketchUp 7, Components. Basically, anything you see in here is accessible from within SketchUp right here. You can go into Architecture, Appliances, and then I can put a Blender in just like that. So back to this menu. Your menu will likely be different depending on how many subfolders you place into the Components folder. Notice down here that it goes down to T and then it starts over at A. 
This is because these items are actually searches that go out onto the internet and query Google's 3D warehouse. You can type in a search up here in this field, and you can search for a specific object, building, or collection. So now we're in an architectural collection. I'll double click on retail, and that will search again for retail items. Eventually we'll drill down to a point where we can insert an actual component into our scene. So let's say we want this cash register in the scene. If you click on the icon, you will actually download that object and you can place it in your scene. If you click on the words, you'll open a browser window, which will give you more information about that particular object. This browser provides an alternative method for navigation. You can click on the arrows to look at different objects here, in different collections. You can go to related items that were made by the same maker. This particular item was made by Google. And it will suggest other items you might like based on your selection. If you're trying to insert a component that itself contains scenes, this is the primary method to do it. You want to click on Download Model, and you'll be prompted either to load it directly into your model or not. If you say no, you have an opportunity to save it as a SketchUp file on your hard drive. And this is the way you want to go if the component you're downloading contains scenes. Otherwise, the scenes will be ignored if it's inserted directly into your existing file. It doesn't matter whether you add components that are on your local hard drive, on your file server, or on the internet. Any way you go, they're added to your model. If you delete the component from view, it doesn't get rid of it in the file. And so, if you experiment with a lot of components, pretty soon your file size starts to grow. It's a good idea to go to the In Model list by clicking on the House icon and periodically purging unused components. You can do that from this menu right here, Purge Unused. Here, I'm going to get rid of the cash register and the blender. And you can see the component is still there in the list, and the blender is down here somewhere. If I purge unused, those will disappear, and my model will be a little bit smaller and more efficient. You can also right-click on a component and get a special menu. Here I can select all the instances of that component in the scene. I could save it out as a file on the hard drive, as a SketchUp file, or I could go to the Properties, which is actually the Edit button up here, where I can change the gluing plane, whether it's a Face Me component, and so on. Here you can reload the component by clicking here, and you can replace it with a different component if you want. In the course of a project, if you end up creating a number of useful components that you want to reuse in the future, you can save the entire in-model list to disk by clicking here and choosing Create a New Collection. Likewise, you can open a folder of SketchUp files and load them into your Components window by choosing this item. Another powerful feature of the Components window is the ability to drag and drop components between folders without having to leave SketchUp. The key to that is this button right here. It displays the secondary selection pane. It's like having two component browsers in one. So up here I have my in-model list. I'll just scroll down and locate this new component which we just designed. Down here I'm in my people folder. I'll just drag the woman in there. That actually copies the SketchUp file into this folder, so everybody in the firm now has access to this new component that I've made. The clipboard is a useful tool, especially when it comes to contextual modeling. As your models grow in complexity, so too do their contextual structures. Let's take a look at the outliner here and see what we have. Expand All. And we have quite a complex arrangement here. And this is overly complicated because most of these structures are groups and they're not named. And it makes identifying the particular group that we're interested in impossible. So we're not going to be able to really effectively use the outliner. Instead, we'll have to rely upon the clipboard. I'd like to copy this tire and hub back here. But as you'll soon see, they're in different structures. I'll double click to enter this context, select this one and keep going until I can find the individual tire here. And it will be easier if I press Shift G to hide everything else. 
I'll double click again and again until I isolate the rubber. Then I'm going to select what looks like two parts here and I'll copy that to the clipboard by pressing Command C. I'm going to close everything by repeatedly double clicking off to the side here to go back up to the top level. Now I could paste that by pressing Command V but then I'd have the tire attached to my cursor and I don't yet have the hub. I'd like to hold off on doing that so I'll press the spacebar. A better approach is to paste it in place by pressing V that makes a copy in the same location. So now we have two tires that are coincident. I'll deselect and I'd like to work on the hub next. I'll double click to enter this group, select this object, double click, and now it looks like I have the hub and I need to also select this geometry in the middle to get it all. I'll press Command C to copy that to the clipboard. And then I'll go up to the top level by repeatedly clicking off to the side to close all the nested groups and components. Then I'll press V to paste in place. Hold down Shift and select the tire. Then go ahead and move that information back. And it will all move together. Of course, a smarter approach would have been to create this as a component in the beginning and then make multiple instances of it because it is the same object over and over again. But in this particular model, which was built by someone else, it didn't have that structure, and I had to rely upon the clipboard and paste in place to help me.